Good Friday afternoon sewing circle. I didn't come on here and <clears throat> excuse me. I didn't come on here and announce this live. I just kind of popped on because I'm working on a project and I thought there was something really interesting that I could share with you on it. So I'm going to give you a little tutorial about how to do pleats with a fork, which I thought would be just um, fun. But there's a few things I wanted to cover first of all. Um, one of them totally unrelated, but remember last week I came on and I showed you how to do the stick-on nail colors. I have an update on that. They are working out great. I mean, look, this is from last Friday and they still look good. No chips, no runs, no drips, no errors. So yeah, that's my little plug for them. Again, I have no stake in that. It was just something I was trying. Thought you might be interested. I've been sewing this week. I've been on the computer. All sorts of things that involve my nails. I've washed the dishes and yeah, they still look really good. So this is so hard because it's backwards <laughs> and I have to do it backwards so that when I sit down to my sewing machine it shows up right on your end. So anyway, that's my update on that. But I wanted to show you this project that I have been working on. I am going to do my best here not to make anybody seasick. We will turn the camera around and I am working on this robe jacket. And um, I'm kind of excited about it. There we go. <laughs> because it's something that uh, you can lounge around the house in. Oh my goodness, this might be really bad. Something that you can lounge around the house in or where to go pick up the kids at the school, um, even shopping, throw it over your um, activewear and dress it up a little bit. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I will show you when it's totally finished. But right now what I'm want, working on and want to show you <laughs> are these fleets. And I think they're just a fun little addition um, in the pattern. She explains how to do it, but I thought I would just give you a little tutorial because it just adds something. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I hope I'm not making anybody seasick because this is all backwards. Um, anyway, you can see that it just adds something to the front of the coat and takes it from okay to okay. So let me show you how I'm putting the pleats on. And again, I'm going to try and do this without making anybody seasick the best that I can. But I have to put the camera in the stand. There we go. So that you can see what I'm doing. And I have to try and get in here without knocking the stand, too. So I just cut these two inch wide bands of the contrasting fabric. And this is a knit. Um, it wants to roll a little bit, but once I get it folded into the pleats, it holds it stiff enough so that it's not a problem. But you could do, you could use a two inch wide ribbon. It wouldn't have to be two inches wide. You could use any ribbon you wanted. Imagine doing this, and I'll show you the pleats again. I mean, imagine that on the bottom of a little girl's skirt or a denim skirt for a grown up, the bottom of a baby doll blouse. Um, there are so many ways that you could use this. And it's cute, and you're gonna see here in just a second, it is super, super simple. So I have my two inch wide strip of fabric and my granny glasses so I can see. And to start this out, I just folded it under the end of the fabric, folded it over and stitched it, started to stitch right here and then began my pleats and just kept going. Now you may have seen this in you know some sewing hack videos. I had seen it as well. And I worried that it wasn't as easy as they make it look. Sometimes those things aren't as easy as they make them look. But I got to tell you, this actually is 
as easy as it looks. And I'm kind of in love with it. Can you tell? So I, what I did, I showed you how I started it at the end. I've been working on it, but I want to show you what you do when you get to the end of a piece because it's super simple and you just hide it in the pleats. So I need to get back in my sewing here. So I made my last pleat and then I have just a little bit left. Now I did not sew all the way to the edge of this pleat because I need to be able to tuck this end of my fabric under there. Put my fork down for just a minute because I don't need it yet. I'm going to put my needle into the fabric and I'm going to turn on my needle down function. You definitely, if you have this function, will want it on because every time you stop, you don't want to have anything scooch on you. But now that my needle's in the fabric and it's not going to slide away from me, I am going to tuck this end underneath that last pleat. So you can see it right there and then I can put my presser foot back down. So now I have my new piece of ribbon or trim tucked under there. And so I'm going to sew just a couple stitches and I'm going to back stitch as well just to get that hooked down. And now we can start our pleats. I am going to back up just a little bit and hopefully you will still be able to see what I'm doing. This way I can get in a little bit closer. So I have my fork here to make the pleats. I am going to slide this fork under or slide the ribbon or trim into the first slot in my fork like this. Then I'm going to roll the fork towards me all the way around until I have a pleat. Now because I have this other one under here, I just need to make sure that that doesn't get bunched up. But there, I have made a pleat with my fork. Now I'm going to do this over and over, so don't worry if you didn't catch that. I pull my fork out and I just feel to make sure that I've got everything lined up and I stitch forward onto that pleat to hold it down. And I want my needle down. If you don't have a needle down function, use your hand wheel and lower the needle into it to hold it in place for you. And now we're going to make another pleat. We're going to slide the fabric into that first slot. We're going to roll it all the way around towards us and then slide it out. Then just stitch forward onto that pleat and we're going to repeat the whole way around. Now this jacket has a hood and I'm going to go all the way around the top of the hood with my pleats. So I'm going to slide the trim into my first slot on my fork. I'm going to roll it towards me all the way around. Now this is out just a little bit. I can just slide it until I get that pleat exactly where I want it. This is a knit, so I have to be careful not to pull. If it was a woven, you probably could just pull it into place. Make sure my fabric underneath is lined up. I'm just feeling to make sure that I'm going to catch that fabric. And then I'm going to sew onto my next pleat. I'm going to slide that ribbon into the fork. Turn it all the way around towards me and just slide until my pleat is in place. So just sew on to that next pleat and just repeat. Slide it in. Slide your fork in all the way around towards you. Slide it out. just keep doing that. Now, I did not measure how much fabric I would need, um, how much of the trim. Um, I just started cutting strips because I knew I had a ton of fabric. But if you, you know, were buying ribbon or something where you wanted to get a finite amount, um, just think each of these is three layers. Each pleat has one 
do three layers of fabric. So if you measure the hem or the sleeve or you know the opening that you want to do this around, multiply that by three. And then I always add a good half to an extra yard for good measure. Um, but that's how much you would want to buy of whatever trim you were going to use. And I just did the wrong. There we go. I'm going to roll this all the way around towards me. And we just keep going. Slide it into that first slot. Roll it all the way towards me. And so on. Now, I, like I said, I was a little nervous that this might be difficult, more difficult than it looked. And like I said, it is not. I was nervous with this knit because the knit wanted to roll. That has not been a problem at all. This has just gone so slick. And so we're just going to keep going. Slide it in. Roll it all the way around. Now, because this is a knit, I'm being very careful not to stretch anything because I wouldn't want it to, um, you know, spring back and wrinkle up the edge of my jacket. So I'm being very careful, very loose about this, and it is doing exactly what I want. And I mean, if you look, let's see, we started right here. So I've already done almost 18 inches in this amount of time, and I'm not going very fast, and I'm stopping to show you things. So really, this does not take long at all. I do make sure that my pleats do not overlap just because I don't want that bulk, oops, that bulk underneath there. So I make sure that the edge of my fork is even with the edge of the previous pleat before I pull it out because I don't want it to, I don't want it to get too thick right here with two pleats overlapping. Get that caught very well. There we go. So I will show you just a few more of these. I'm almost to the end of this strip. And so I don't really have enough to roll another one, but I don't want that much length. So I'm going to grab some scissors. Sorry about that. There we go. And I'm just going to trim this to about the width of another pleat. That way I don't end up with too much bulk underneath my pleats. And then I can start my next piece of trim. The same way I started this one, I've sewn onto that so I can lift up the presser foot, but I haven't sewn the whole way. So I'm going to tuck this piece of fabric underneath here, put my presser foot down and just sew onto it to hold it in place. <laughs> And then I just start over. Making sure that this piece underneath, the end of the other piece, is not sticking out badly or wrinkled up underneath. And I just keep going. 
So again, I won't make you watch. I've still got quite a bit left to do on the front. Oh, my granny glasses on the front of this. But um, anyway, I hope that that was helpful for you. I will show you the entire piece once I'm done. I will be sure to post that. Um, I have started a partnership. I'm going to be a pattern tester for a designer. Her name is Jessica Kramer and her page is Chambry Blues Sewing. Or if you follow her on Instagram, it's all one word, Chambry Blues Sewing. And um, I've already made a few of her things. I'm actually wearing one of her blouse designs today that I made. If you go back a few posts, I posted a little bit about um, the process of making this blouse. So um, if you're interested, check out her page and you'll see this jacket when I'm done. I'll be taking some fun pictures to post and help her to um, advertise her patterns and show off her designs. So I hope you found all of that helpful. I hope you have a good afternoon and I hope that you are staying nice and warm wherever you are. So we will talk to you later when this is all done. Bye.